Welcome back the Keto Family. Today I'm showing you how incredibly quick and easy it is to make your own almond milk at home. If this is your first time with us, don't forget. Hit the subscribe button below and the bell icon so you don't miss upcoming videos. Alright lovelies, so almond milk is something that I've been buying for years. My husband um, is quite intolerant to cow's milk and if we buy it and he drinks it the whole family ends up regretting it so we've been buying almond milk for the longest time and i didn't realize until a couple months ago it is actually incredibly easy to make your own at home uh, it's actually more cost efficient you can actually control what goes in it and the consistency and the flavors you get out of it it's incredible the only downside is it doesn't store very long so i'm going to warn you guys about that straight up front it'll store for five to seven days in the refrigerator but it's so fast to make i'm not gonna lie i find myself in here every weekend it takes about 20 30 minutes i whip a batch of it and we got enough for the whole week now as far as my family goes just the three of us since we stopped eating cereal we don't go through a whole lot of almond milk so i tend to make it up in small batches but if you have a larger family or if you do eat cereal and you need more this recipe is very easy to double triple make as much as you want guys all right so that being said let me go into the simple ingredients that you need for this as far as the almonds go you're going to use whole natural almonds you want these raw you don't want to buy the roasted salted almonds okay and then you're going to need bottled water i use distilled water you can use tap water if you want to but use it at your own peril if you're anything like me you might have tap water that has a very chemically taste to it chlorinated taste that will affect the way your almond milk tastes. So I don't recommend using tap water at all. I buy you know, the big jug of bottled water and I get it for like 86 cents down at the grocery store. It's not expensive and that bit goes a long way. All right guys, so we got our two ingredients here. I have a cup of almonds and a cup of water. I'm gonna be using my Instapot here to cook these in, get them nice and swelled up and full of the water. If you don't have an Instapot or a pressure cooker, you can definitely soak these overnight. So I'm gonna stick a cup of almonds straight to the bottom of the Instapot. I'm also gonna pour a cup of water in with it. All right, then we're just gonna cover this up. Make sure you close your valve. And we're gonna pressure cook this on high for four minutes. All right guys, I get it time to cook. I'll see y'all back in a minute. All right, lovely, so this did finish cooking. I went ahead and did a quick vent on it. So the next step is we're going to be draining out all this water and then we're going to rinse the almonds out in the sink. So I went ahead and have a bowl and a strainer set up here. Don't burn your fingers on this guys. It's hot. All right. Now when you're rinsing these off, you do have the option if you want to of popping these almonds out of their skins. It's as easy as that. Um, that just all depends on whether or not you want the skins to be in your almond milk or not. Me personally, I leave mine on. The almonds do have, uh, the skins do have a bit of fiber and some antioxidant properties. I just prefer to leave them on. However, comment, be aware it will make your milk just very slightly less white. And then if you do what I do and you save the pulp from the, um, after you make the milk, all that ground up almond pulp, I saved mine and once I got a good amount of it saved up in a jar, I'll go ahead and bake it in the oven and make almond meal out of it. The only difference between the almond meal and the almond flour is almond meal still has the skins in it, whereas the almond flour is just the bare little almonds that have been processed and dried out. So it's up to you what you want to do. I don't mind it so I keep them on. I'm going to go ahead and rinse these out and I'll be right back. Alright, so I've gone ahead and gotten all these almonds rinsed off. I'm just going to go ahead and put them in my measuring cup for now. Goodness, these, you can see just how much these swelled up as they won't. They're coming out of the measuring cup slightly now and not down to the one cup mark like they were. All right, lovely. So I'm going to be using my food processor here. If you have a blender or a Nutribullet, you can use those as well. Just keep in mind how much you're going to put in at a time. I have to break this up into two batches. The first time I did it, I was ambitious, and I'm like, oh, no, that'll all fit in there. You know, and of course, the almonds fit, and the water fit, and as soon as I turned this bad boy on the high, the water started coming 
out of the top and all over the counter and it was a hot mess in here. It took me a little while to clean that up. So FYI, you might want to break it up into two batches unless you know for sure that your appliance can handle it, okay? So I'm going to be putting half of the almonds. That's about half. And then I'm also going to be putting one cup of water. Now the total amount of water that you're going to use in this will vary. The total amount can go anywhere from between two to four cups. I like mine closer to two cups than four cups. I find even three to three and a half cups, it was just way too watery for me. And at that point I had to take half the almond milk out of the bottle, put it in a saucepan and cook it down a little bit. Just simmer it. You do not want that to boil. But just simmer it down, thicken it up a little bit, get some of that moisture out of there and then put it back in the bottle and stick it in the fridge. Now, if you want to make almond milk coffee creamer, that is a great way to go. Go ahead and do the whole batch of it at once because you don't want it to be runny at all and then stick it in the fridge and store it. All right, so I got my cup of distilled water. I'm gonna go ahead and put this in. All right, so we're gonna put this on high for about four minutes. All right, lovely. So I had let this go for four minutes on high. I'm gonna go ahead and remove that. Get my towel. This does get a little bit messy. It helps to have a towel handy. All right. Now we're gonna be straining out the milk from the pulp here. And I got something called a milk bag here. You can find these really cheap on Amazon. I'll make sure I link it below for you. But if you don't have one or want to get one, you can definitely use cheesecloth as well. I have used that in the past. However, comma, having said that, you will need to layer it up several times, three or four layers. One, so that it doesn't break apart on you, and two, it's got to really catch all these fine particles. You don't want to have a gritty almond milk. That's not a pleasant experience. I'm just going to pour this into the milk bag. All right, and we're just going to squeeze as much of the milk out of here as we can. And I find it helpful for me just to twist a couple times to keep it from trying to walk its way up through the bag. You want to really squeeze out as much of this moisture as possible. And I know me personally, when I get done, I like to see a dry ball of the meal stuck down in here. And what I do is I save that and I turn it into almond flour. Well, technically it's almond meal, but for simply the sake, I just call it almond flour because it has the skins in it, it's almond meal. And then when I have a good batch of that, enough to justify keeping the oven on for eight hours, I'll cook it up, save myself money twice that way by using the almonds for both the almond milk and the almond flour. All right, so now that we've got as much moisture out as possible, I'm gonna save this in a bowl and then I'll transfer it to my container in the freezer a little later. All right, so we're going to repeat the same process again with the rest of the almonds and another cup of bottled water. All right, this going for another four minutes on high. All right, lovely. So this has finished for the second batch. Repeat the same process of squeezing all of the milk out of here. Get as much of that gritty pulp out of it as possible. Right, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. So not getting any more drops coming out of there. So let's go ahead and we'll empty this out and continue on. What I love about these milk bags is they're washable and reusable. I must have used this one, gosh, at least a dozen times and works great every time. There we go. All right. So now what I need to do is I want to rinse out my food processor here. I'm going to be running the milk back to it one more time, but I don't want any of the grit that's in there 
to reincorporate back into the milk since I worked so hard to get it out of there. So we'll rinse this out and I'll be right back. All right, so I got this all rinsed up. What we're gonna do is we're gonna add the milk that we just finished preparing to it. And this is where you get to get creative and really personalize this to your taste. Now, you can leave it just like this and not flavor it at all, with the exception of adding a teaspoon of sunflower lecithin to this. Now, I found that this sunflower lecithin, it helps with the emulsions of the fats that are naturally gonna be in the almonds to not separate from the water as badly. Uh, now, there is a tiny little bit of separation. It's nothing to write home about in all reality. It does separate very, very slightly, but not nearly as bad as it would without it. So I highly recommend adding a teaspoon of sunflower less than to this. And in my family, we like to have lightly sweetened vanilla in ours. So I'll add one teaspoon of vanilla, and then I'll add a tablespoon of sweetener. I'm using Pyor Stevia. You can use your sweetener of choice here. I just recommend don't use granular sweetener in this. Make sure you do use a powder sweetener. Now, my daughter absolutely goes gaga over this whenever I add a tablespoon of unsweetened cocoa powder and I'll make chocolate almond milk. But that's not the purpose of this today. I want to make vanilla almond milk. I like to use it a lot in my cooking, so. All right, so we're gonna pulse this 15, 20 times, just enough to get everything mixed together really well. All right, and that is it. Our almond milk is done. What I do last, this is an optional step, but I like to just make sure I didn't reintroduce any of the gritty pulp back to it, as I'm gonna strain it one more time through the milk bag. This would be really quick. It usually just slides straight through. I got it on myself too there, didn't I? All right, so this is officially done. So I got this, I picked up the cutest little bottle at Hobby Lobby. I swear this was only like two or three dollars. They had them 50% off when I went in. All right, so we're gonna use a funnel and just pour it through. So as far as the amount of the prepared milk with this recipe, it comes out to being just under two cups prepared. This is an easy, very easy recipe to double if you need to. Um, if you also need just a little bit less than that, so you only need it on the spot for something in particular, you can always have it if you want to. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. Don't forget, leave me a thumbs up down below. It really helps the channel. Until next time, guys, bye.